I'm Jason, and I'm Bach, baby. That's B-A-W-C, Build Apps Without Code, where I teach non-technical people like myself how to build apps without writing one line of code. Wait, what? Today we're going to talk about building a mobile app in Bubble. Now I know what your first question is going to be. After I build my app in Bubble, can I get it on the iOS or Android app stores? The answer is yes, but it's not exactly what we're covering today. Today's topic is going to be how to build your mobile app so you can later submit it to those app stores and have a better chance of it being accepted. There's a special way to do things when you're building for mobile and I am going to teach it to you. Let's dive right in. Here we have a single player rock, paper, scissors mobile app that I've been working on. So I can choose my weapon here and the computer will randomly choose their weapon. Uh, best of three, let's do a quick round. Winner! Not rigged, I promise. Let's take a look at the designer though. I have three main groups here. At the top I have the home group, which is in white. And this is where the game is played, where we just were. Underneath it, if we scroll down, I have this group in green, which is a stats group. Uh, it's currently hidden, so we don't see it over here. And below that I have a settings group, um, which is also hidden. So the home group, the white one, is the only one that's showing at this point. But I need a way to navigate to the other two groups, stats and settings. So that's what we're going to work on right now. Why did I stack all these on a single page instead of creating a new page for stats and another page for settings? I don't know. Well, by stacking them on a single page, we can show and hide the different groups uh, using page parameters. The parameters and conditions that we will set up will tell Bubble which groups to show and which ones to hide. And we're going to design this way for mobile because it gives us very quick, speedy navigation. I like to be quick, not just in my apps. Ayo! It also behaves more like a mobile app instead of like a traditional website where you navigate between different pages and wait for them to load. This way you load the page once and you're done. Finished. Also, if you're planning on submitting your app to an app store, it may be easier to go through this process and to be accepted if you have a single page application. The first thing I want to do here is add a mobile app menu bar. And you've seen these before. They're basically in every mobile app. Here's my Twitter app on my phone, for example. I'm talking about the icons along the bottom. You can see them there. There's a home, there's a search, there's notifications. If we switch over to YouTube, YouTube app has them as well. Home, shorts, subscription, library, and um, on Slack as well. Home, DMs, you see the icons on the bottom. That's the app menu bar. That's what we're going to work on right now for this app. And that's how we're going to navigate between our different uh, groups. Okay, if we scroll down to the bottom here, I left a little space here. Let's just open this up a touch. We're going to grab a floating group. And that's what we're going to use for the app menu bar. Throw it at the bottom here. We're going to make it flush right to our blue group here. We'll make it about 60 pixels and then we can drag our page up right to the top. Now it's called a floating group because it floats on top of everything else. They float. Important here, vertically float relative to. This one we want to say bottom because it's going to stick to the bottom. If we go back to our preview, um, there's also a floating group at the top here that's already set up and that was for the header. And that one sticks to the top but this one's going to stick to the bottom. So the next thing we'll need are our icons. Uh, you could use the bubble icons, but there's also a free plugin you can get, which has a little bit more variety. Um, it's called Material Icon, so that's what we're going to use today. Uh, so if I throw an icon in here, the first one I want is Home. I've got a nice little house here. And we'll make it about 30 by 30. The second one I want is stats, so some kind of chart. 
And the last one we want is settings. A nice little gear, there it is. It's not very responsive. You can see they are a little bit to the left. What we can do here is first of all, make sure this is not fixed width, which is not. And second, we want to group this group elements in a group on this home icon here. And we'll spread this out, make it about 100 pixels. And we'll do the same thing here. And the important thing here is these groups, we want to make sure they're not fixed width. So we're going to uncheck this, uncheck that, and uncheck that. It's going to make sure that these groups can expand and contract based on the size of the mobile device. So it's better, but still not great. Uh, this I want more in the center, and this I want more in the center. So it looks like the icons aren't centering inside their groups, and this is too far to the left. So one more thing we can do here, I'm just gonna go to the responsive tab and click on these groups and just center a line here. Also need to center align the icons. That looks better, evenly spaced now, and as I shrink the screen, you can see that uh, Looks good. We can go back to our phone here. Now we have this uh, built on bubble. It's going to hide our settings icon, which is why we put it here at the top as well. So we can still use it. This goes away if you have a paid account, but since I'm just messing around on a free account right now, um, it's going to cause problems, but that's okay. So the last thing I want to do here is put a border on the top. And we can do that by removing the style on the floating group. Define each border independently because I only want a top border. Solid gray color, that should be good. Maybe like a light gray. Perfect. Okay, so how do we use these icons to navigate and show different groups? Let's uh, work on home first. So I'm gonna start a workflow on this home icon. So when you press it, we're gonna do something. I'm gonna navigate go to page and we're going to go to the same page that we're on. Remember it's one page, single page design. Rock, paper, scissors, that's the one that uh, you can see here, that's the one that we're on. The difference though is we're going to send a parameter to the page. So we're going to check this checkbox, add another parameter. You can call it anything you want, doesn't matter, we're just going to call it page. And in this case when you when you click on the home icon, we're going to set the parameter to home. Okay. So what is that going to do exactly? Let's go back to design. I'm going to go to my home group. Now I'm going to hide this on page load because we only want to show it when the page parameter is equal to home. And we can do that in their conditional settings here. So we want get data from page url that's the one parameter name we just named it is called page is home so when the page parameter is equal to home we're going to show the home group this element is visible checked I'll show you how that works so we hit that uh, group by default, so it doesn't show by default anymore. But if you click on the home icon, it shows. And this just showed up, page equals home. Try that again. Watch the URL when I click home. And one of the reasons that we build it this way which, with page parameters is that um, if you refresh the app, it'll stay on the same screen. Um, also, if you go back, like uh, Android has a native back button, if you do that, then it'll actually go back to the previous page you were on in the app, where if we didn't set it up with page parameters, you wouldn't be able to do that. Okay, next up, we're going to work on our stats or chart. So let's start a workflow here. And let's actually go here and we'll just copy this one. 
bring it over here. And this time we're going to set the page parameter to stats. And we'll do one more. We can just copy this workflow and change this settings icon here. This page parameter we'll call settings. On our stats group, hidden by default, but we're going to set up a condition. Remember, it's get data from page URL. Parameter name is page. When it is stats, then we're going to show this group. Element is visible and settings. And we'll also do settings on this top one here. Let's try it. Uh, so here, page is home, so that's why we're seeing the home screen. And if we hit this, page equals stats, and that's why we're seeing this screen. In settings, there's just a way to change um, the best of. So is it best of one game, best of three games, best of five? So if I clicked one, for example, and we went back to home, now this is just best of one, and I won. One important thing I should mention here, make sure you have collapse this element's height when hidden. Make sure that's checked on your main groups. I have it checked on group home, group stats, and group settings. Um, that'll make sure that when that group is hidden, the height collapses so you're not left with a bunch of empty white space. I only had the background color there just so I can see the different groups. Um, but now that we're done, we can go to none, background style none, and there we go. One more thing I want to do, this title home, I want it to change when I click on stats, I want it to say stats, and when I click on settings, I want it to say settings. Uh, so we're going to do same idea here. On this piece of text, we're going to do make a conditional. So when the page is home, the text is going to be home. Let's do another one. Copy this. When the page is stats, The text will change to stats. Here on settings, and now we're on stats, and now we're on home. Oh, I can't even win at my own game. How do we get our bubble apps into app stores? You will need a third party service that wraps web apps like this one in a format that's acceptable to iOS or Android. Uh, you will have to pay for this. It might cost a few hundred bucks, but it you do need this service. It's something that can't be done without code, unfortunately, but do a quick Google search. There's tons of companies out there that can do it for you, and I definitely think it's worth it. Uh, one last thing I want to mention, I'm going to do a follow-up video on how I made the Rock Paper Scissors app. I'm talking about how I set up this uh, functionality here and how I set up the workflows. If you're interested in that, go to buildappswithoutcode.com slash rockpaperscissors and it's, the link's in the description and I'll send that video to you when it's ready. I'm not going to be posting it to YouTube. It'll be an unedited video that I'm going to be sending to my email subscribers only. So go sign up. And when that's ready, I will send it to you and show you how this was done. Uh, I appreciate you watching. I have more bubble videos in the pipeline. So if you like this one, subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss the next one. Many more to come. You're awesome. Don't forget it. Much love. Peace. Thank you so much. Bye.